partner, welcome to The Balancing Act. I'm Olga Villaverde. And hi, I'm Antoine Williams. Today, we're going behind the mystery. We're going to learn more about Castleman disease. Now, this is a rare disorder of the lymph nodes and related tissues. Plus, why should you consider final expense insurance? And I will be hitting the links. Have you played golf before? I drive a mean cart. <laughs> Me too. But this is the links virtually. I'm going to love this. With LPGA pro golfer Natalie Gulbis. She's fantastic. Wow. That should be a lot of fun. There you go. Well, look, the balancing act starts right now. This rare disorder is sometimes referred to as a mix between an autoimmune disease, an infectious disease, and a cancer with symptoms that mimic many other disorders. The path to diagnosis can be complicated and often results in frequent misdiagnosis. The hope lies in awareness and ongoing treatment developments. Join us as we take you behind the mystery of Castleman disease. My name's Frank Garino. I'm 48 years old. I live in Levittown, New York. I got three amazing sons and my beautiful wife, Dina. They're my world. They're everything to me. A couple years ago, I started to have symptoms, uh, really upset stomach, uh, little side pains, a little bit of chest pains. Went to my primary, gave me a couple of stomach meds. As months went by, I started to get worse. Went back to my primary numerous times, and uh, we decided to go to St. Francis to get some more intense uh, tests, CAT scans, MRIs. They found out that my uh, gallbladder was only working 3%. So they set me up for gallbladder surgery the following day. Approximately 6,500 to 8,700 new cases of Castleman disease are diagnosed every year. The subtype IMCD has up to 957 new cases per year. Physician, scientist, and best-selling author of Chasing My Cure, Dr. David Fagenbaum is a leading expert on Castleman disease. He is also on a very personal mission. I was a healthy third-year medical student when out of nowhere I became deathly ill. My organs shut down and I was so sick that I actually had my last rites read to me. Thankfully, chemotherapy saved my life, but unfortunately I would go on to have relapse after relapse after relapse. It started me on a mission towards trying to find a treatment and maybe even one day a cure for Castleman disease. So I'm continuing to work day after day to find that solution as a scientist, but also as a patient. After a day in the hospital, I came home, started to get very fatigued. I started to run a little fever, and I started to develop a cough. I called my primary. He admitted me back to the hospital for more tests. They saw that my lymph nodes were swollen. Uh, infectious disease doctors came in. They uh, quarantined me in a special room because they didn't know what I had. Castleman disease is a hyperinflammatory disorder where the immune system becomes activated and then begins to attack and shut down the body's vital organs. I was in the hospital for four weeks. Just every day, the numbers were getting worse. Kidney function, liver function, they were just really shutting down on me. And being in a hospital and the doctors really not knowing what you have, I was really terrified. Patients can have flu-like symptoms or they're tired and they have low energy. Uh, they can have night sweats. They can also go on to notice fluid accumulating around their ankles and in their bellies and sometimes a cough, again, due to fluid accumulation. These are symptoms that you can see in a lot of other conditions. But the difference in Castleman disease is that these symptoms will persist. They don't come and go. I was in the hospital. They wound up taking a lymph node out and they did a biopsy on my lymph node. Now, the doctors were treating me with uh, fluids, steroids, and uh, they were giving me chemotherapy, and uh, it wasn't working. Two or three days passed, they came back into the room, the full team of doctors, and they said to me and my wife, uh, looks like you have, your husband has Castleman disease. Doctors not knowing what was wrong with me, that scared me a lot. The diagnosis of all forms of Castleman disease should be made based on a thorough clinical history, physical examination, imaging, but most importantly, a lymph node biopsy where the complete lymph node is excised and then reviewed under a microscope. Castleman disease is classified as either unicentric Castleman disease where there's only a single enlarged lymph node or multicentric Castleman disease where there are multiple enlarged lymph nodes throughout the body. 
MCD patients with multicentric Castleman disease are the most severe cases. It's really important to classify those patients as either being caused by a virus called HHV8 or patients that are negative for that virus, which we call HHV8 negative or idiopathic multicentric Castleman disease. Those cases are the most difficult to treat because we know so little about what causes them. My wife Googled Castleman disease and Dr. David Feinbaum came up and that's how we learned about Castleman disease. We emailed uh, the doctor on the internet and uh, he called us back in about, I would say 20 minutes, a half hour. He said, have your doctors call me. They're giving your husband the wrong medicine. In 2014, the anti-IL-6 therapy siltuximab, also known as Silvent, became the first and only IMCD treatment approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration based on effectiveness, safety, and rigorous studies. Consensus guidelines now recommend it as a frontline therapy for patients with IMCD. The National Comprehensive Cancer Network also recommends Silvent as a preferred treatment for IMCD for plasma slash mixed histology. A couple years ago, we established the first ever treatment guidelines for idiopathic multicenter Castleman disease based on review of over 300 patients with IMCD. We recommend siltuximab first line based on it being the only FDA approved drug. Siltuximab targets a particular cytokine called interleukin-6. Interleukin-6 is elevated in a large number of Castleman's patients and blocking it is effective in between one third and one half of patients. In patients where blocking interleukin-6 is not effective, then we have to use more broad, non-specific treatments like chemotherapies or immunosuppressants. Once my doctor started working with David Feigenbaum, I got my official diagnosis. I was idiopathic, mostly centric Castleman disease. I found out from Dr. David Feigenbaum, the medicine that he recommended for me is Cetuximab. Uh, 24 hours later, after my first treatment, was a real turning point for me. I woke up that morning and uh, my fever was gone and the cough, I, I, you know, I couldn't believe my cough stopped. The doctors came in that day and they told me that we're coming out of ICU, we're going into a regular room. It's been two years now since I've been on Um I feel great. I did have some side effects. I get a uh, little itchy skin. About a couple hours after treatment, I get very fatigued, but it doesn't last too long at all. Uh, I'm back to the normal stuff that I used to do. I'm coaching my son's baseball, and uh, I'm back to work full time, and that means the world to me. Being on Cetuximab, knowing that I have uh, this medicine to battle this, this really, really bad disease, and knowing that how good it works for me is just a godsend. Castleman disease is still poorly understood by the medical community, but one organization is posed to change that. Dr. Fagenbaum is the executive director and co-founder of the Castleman Disease Collaborative Network. When I started the CDCN back in 2012, I knew that if we didn't build a global community of physicians, researchers, and patients, that I wouldn't survive. Thankfully, over the last eight years, we've made incredible progress. It's just been incredible to watch the transition that we've made from chasing my cure to chasing our cures together and keeping patients at the center of everything that we do. For more information on Castleman disease, the research and the treatment we've discussed, go to sylvent.com, cdcn.org, or you can visit our website, thebalancingact.com. Final expense insurance is something we don't necessarily love to talk about, but it's one of the most important plans to have. So here to talk to us about final expense insurance is the president of Family First Life, Sean Mike, and senior board member, Paul McLean. Welcome to both of you. Thanks Thank for having you. us. And welcome back to you. Thank you very much. You're always educating us on life insurance. I've learned so much, but I must say, final expense insurance. I don't know much about this one. Okay. So when you get to, let's take a, a 20, when you were in your 20s, you probably took out a term policy. You know, started thinking about having a family, mm -hmm. whatever your dynamic was going to be, get a mortgage, you got a term policy. I did that. You had it for 10, 20, 30 years, get to the point where now you're in your 50s, happy your life. Yes, happy we're still, wait, hold on. 
Yeah, okay. have you alive, no doubt about it. You're here, but now your situation changed a little bit. You think, okay, that term policy, I may not need that anymore. Or actually, now I'm getting to a certain age where I'm going like, I know I need insurance, but what's the best option for me? Do I take out another term policy or do I take something out that I have for my entire life? So final expense is just another way to talk about whole life insurance. What a whole life insurance is, is I'm above the age of 50, below the age of 86, and I say to myself, you know what? I need to start thinking about when something happens to me. If well, something happens. something's going to happen to me. Right. So if I'm 50, something, I'm eventually going to die. There's no, none of us get out of here alive. So right. I'm gonna die. I need to take something out to protect my family so when my final expenses come due, funeral, cremation, oh, I see. bills. Final expense Final expense insurance. insurance. So my grandchildren, my whatever your dynamic is, maybe you wanna give something away, leave it to somebody. You take out a policy that you have until the day you die. All right, so it's not really that long life insurance policy, but it covers that? Right, absolutely. All right, break it down for me then, it would be? So, you know, you, you take a $50,000 policy. Say, so you know what, I'm gonna get a funeral. Now, funerals are expensive. So you start thinking about what you actually are gonna have to do, and you don't want anybody to have to pay for that. And we have some of our agents sometimes, we're like, you know, GoFundMe is not a life insurance policy. And we see people, and you feel terrible, because you know there was a death, because they talk about it, and they're asking to raise money to pay the expenses. They're not trying to get rich, they just don't want, they don't have the money exactly. to take care of it. So what we do is we get people, and Paul's one of the thousands of agents we have across the country, that they go out there and sit down with them and help them put this in place. And the nice thing is, the premiums stay the same, so you don't have to worry about them going up, down, up, down, up, down, they stay. So if I'm 55 and I take it out, it will stay the same, and these holy of policies, the ones that we participate in until the day they pass away, and their beneficiary gets all that money when they pass away to do with what they would want them to do. All right, and Paul, do some people say, well, you know, I just can't right now, um, every penny counts, uh, it's too difficult, it's too expensive. Yeah, absolutely, and I think it's just a priority thing, you know, so our job is to clarify that anybody can do this, and it's a simple process, you know, when it comes to life insurance and final expense, you know, most people make it bigger than it actually is. And at the end of the day, when I sit with a client, it takes like, you know, all of a couple minutes, I ask a couple medical questions, I identify, okay, this is the product that will qualify you. And really in like two to five minutes, I've got an answer from the carrier that you've been qualified. And so I think it's just understanding how important it is because they don't want to leave a burden when they die. So our job is just to clarify, hey, we understand that your budget's fixed and, and you know you, you know what your expenses are, you know what your income is every month. This is something that you got to put in place first and fit everything else around it because it is that important. At the end of the day, your family is the number one thing. Absolutely. And, um, and that's what our job is to communicate that to the clients we care and about. And anyone, Paul, is eligible? Like, let's say someone says, well, I have diabetes or I have um, some illnesses. Yeah, absolutely. So as long as they're over the age of 50, under the age of 86, they can qualify regardless of their health conditions. So really, this is a no-brainer. It's an absolute no-brainer. The best way it was put to me was a 79-year-old client of mine who said to me, you know why I'm going to do this? And I said, no, sir, why? He said, because I've lived with a lot of dignity and I'm not gonna die without it. Uh -huh. and I was like, and it really hit me like that. He said, I'm not gonna have people walking around trying to figure out how to pay for my bills. It's my responsibility. And I was like, that's, that. I, you can't say any better than that. That's fantastic. And it's such a, it's just such a burden when those things happen. Um, for our viewers who'd love to learn more about, and I'm gonna say it again, it's final expense insurance. Correct. Uh, FamilyFirstLife.com. We have a myriad of products on there. You can look at the whole life products we have, which will help you with your final expenses. We do all kinds of different insurance with independent agents. So we have so many different insurance carriers to pick from, because I think that's important. Everybody's situation is different. There's no way that everybody should have the exact same policy from the exact same, this wouldn't make any sense. So, you know, Paul and, and all the other amazing agents we have can come out there and educate you, show you what you have, see what the liability is, show you how simple it is to get the, pro to get the product and uh, protect you. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having Paul, us. Thank you. Yeah, and what, thank you. what area do you work out of? California. California, all yep. right. Thanks for coming down to Florida. Hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. 20,000 for a funeral. Jeez Louise, <laughs> my wedding was half that. <laughs> Jeez Louise. For more information, you can go to our website, thebalancingact.com. Did you know there are 4.9 million women who play at least one round of golf a year? But by contrast, there are about 16.2 million males. Big difference there. Stats show only 24% of golfers over the age of six in the U.S. are female. Well, 
it is time to increase those numbers, ladies. And joining us virtually from Ohio is LPGA pro Natalie Gulbis, who says golf is a great sport no matter your skill level. Hi, Natalie. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And completely, it's a great game for women. Anyone, really. My favorite thing about golf is that it doesn't discriminate against age, sex, ability, economic status. It's really a game that I can play Hopefully one day with my kids, I can play with my mom, you and I can play together. There's not a lot of sports that are out there like golf. And I just think it's something that's really, really special about the game. Well, I don't know about you and I, because I have never played golf in my life, so I would be a newbie for you. Um, and, and let's talk about that, because I don't know, I, I kind of find it a little bit intimidating, um, a little bit embarrassment with, you know, what is it, the four, four, and not having that perfect, you know, perfect swing? Well, you don't have to have a perfect swing. Anything is intimidating, just like any sport when you start it. But what you have to know about golf is that it doesn't take anything really to start. I mean, yes, there is equipment, but you can just go to a local driving range. You can go to a golf course across the country. There's pros at every single golf course and country that are willing to help. And golf is a very open and inviting sport. And one of my favorite things about golf is that when you do start to play, it's very social. You're outside, you're out there playing. You and I can go and spend three, four hours together, hit shots and um, go and chit chat along the way. And it's it's a great physical exercise too. You're walking six, seven miles. If you carry your bag, you can burn a lot of calories. So there are a lot of pluses, but anything that you try to start off with is gonna be intimidating. I will say my husband plays a little bit of golf and I enjoy, you know, <laughs> I drive the golf cart. <laughs> so that's my job, okay? Uh, but give us some tips about, you know, just getting started. Some people will say, well, it's too expensive. Money's tight now. It takes a lot of time. So give us your, you know, your feedback. I know we've got some great video of you also. So how I hit the shot is I like to hit it two inches behind. I open my stance and I open my blade. No, you cannot touch the sand, but two inches behind, open your stance, open your blade. My best tips to get started is the next time that you're driving around in the golf cart to so take your husband's golf clubs and hit it a couple times. Tee it up, go to the range beforehand. That's less intimidating and maybe watch a little bit of golf on TV. It's always great to, uh, to you know, kind of see what's happening, but really to just to start it. It is like anything, you just have to start it. And one of the reasons that golf is so popular is because you get hooked. There's so many different aspects of it, but there's a really wonderful side of golf that it is social, it is really peaceful. You are gonna be outside. And so I just wanna encourage you next time that your husband goes out or he goes out to the driving range, you just join him and just try it. Well, I'd have to first get a set of clubs and I've actually got two here to my left and right. This is the Kalea, I love the name actually. And this is the Sim. One thing I noticed about both of them, first of all, just stylish galore. Let's start with that. And just really, really lightweight. I was pleasantly surprised now Natalie? There are 11 pieces that are set to maximize your performance. Uh, each club is designed to help you become a better golfer, also to just make golf more fun. They're very easy, they're very player friendly. You can get them on the TaylorMade website, you can get them at most sporting goods. The Sim, on the other hand, is maybe for the next level up. Sim is actually the clubs that the tour players use. It's what I use. It's what the players that best in the game use, like Tiger Woods and Dustin Johnson and Royal McElroy. But what's really neat is about TaylorMade is that they make clubs specifically for women. So they're very easy to find. And look at you pulling out the driver. Look at that. I'm see your This ready. is the good one. This is the good one. Okay, so I'm just going to practice a little more while I say goodbye to you. How was it again? You said to uh, swing it. Get a little bit of an athletic stance and just like a baseball swing, but a little bit lower. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Uh, oh, I just hit the floor. Just like that. <laughs> Just like. All right, this has been too much fun. Uh, good luck in the future, and hopefully you bring the trophy home this year. Great, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. And All good right. luck with your course. Thank you so much. And remember to head to our, our website, thebalancingag.com. Next time I won't hit the floor. I just hit the floor again. Look, I'm gonna be careful now. There we go. Montel, should I take up golf? Uh, if it's in your living room virtually, that's what I do. There you go. If it's outside, I'm just going to ride the golf cart. There you go. <laughs> well, look, thanks so much for joining us today on The Balancing Act. Remember to head to our Facebook page and our website and follow us on Twitter. And make sure you stay safe, stay well, and love your family.